should we try and make a start? Um, first of all, colleagues, we'll see if that form more microphones than normal. Apparently they're permanently on, so all you need to do is to lean forward to speak to them. So if anyone's saying anything rude about me or uh, other colleagues, thank you. Never, never, yeah. Exactly. Um, it will be there for posterity. So uh, just uh, a bit of a update on that. So hopefully, finally, after I don't know how many years, Joe, we, yeah, we might get the PA system right. That would be good. We've had a number of apologies for absence. So that uh, Tom Anderson, David Burgess-Joyce, Jackie Hall, MBE, who's the community rep for Hoyle from Mells, and Alicia Butler-Ward, who's the community rep for West Kirby and Thurston. And I think they have, however, done reports, haven't they? So when we come to it, yeah, yeah. so we've got some information there. First thing I'd like us all to do, if that's okay, is to uh, uh, stand for a minute silence following the recent death of Councillor Rob Gregson. That's okay. the Code of Conduct and any declarations of interest, any disclosable pecuniary or non-pecuniary interests in connection with any other business? No? Okay. In that case, if we could um, move on to the minutes, I the minutes have been circulated. Is it okay with everybody if I sign those as a, an accurate record? Thank you, Chair. Yeah? Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, next item we have is the uh, road safety program, and uh, I think we're going to have Jane to make a short presentation, and then we've also got Dave Rees, the most popular man in the council, <laughs> uh, certainly in terms of the number of emails he gets from everyone. Um, so uh, again, so Dave's going to help with this discussion. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna, um, you stand well, well away from the microphone. Yeah, I'm going to take this one. Okay. Got a, a few slides, um, but um, this item is to give an update on um, the committee's road safety programme. For since the first year of the constituency committee, we've had money devolved to the committee for road safety schemes. Um, that's road safety and active travel, so covering a range of a range of things um, and I thought it was a good time to actually update um, members of the public as well as the committee on what that money's been spent on um, and what other future kinds of schemes that are coming forward. Um, I've provided a budget overview there uh, which I think is quite helpful because because we have had money year on year and that's rolled over this gives a summary total of, of everything. So. The first year, the committee was allocated 77,750, following year 25,000, and then 32,500. So what that meant was a total constituency allocation of 135,000, and a total available per ward for schemes of 27,000. So each constituency area um, had the same um, allocation. Um, and in line with uh, previous decisions of this committee, the money was allocated pretty much equitably by ward. So if I move on to, uh, but what I should say, sorry, is that um, the committee approached this by setting up a panel of uh, members, uh, one member from each ward to discuss schemes. It was quite a complex discussion, as you can imagine, looking at each individual scheme. Um, so Councillor Clements, Councillor Hale and Ellis, Councillor Sullivan, Councillor Whittingham and Councillor Elderton have been involved in those discussions over the years. 
Um, and we also have a meeting with West Kirby Council earlier this year because some, there were some new issues coming forward which we needed to discuss. So it's been an ongoing um, development, this programme. Um, so some of the, I wanted to set out what the schemes have already been done um, and what are coming forward um, to highlight those for the committee because we do need to meet again to finalise some of this. Um, but the reason why Dave's here as well is that um, road safety comes up continuously, uh, continually in question time um, at the committee meeting um, and Dave's here to kind of talk through any particular issues the committee might have or um, possibly that members of the public might want to raise. So we're very lucky to have Dave, who's, his expertise is fantastic in terms of this and provides us with expert guidance on, on road safety. Um, in Greensby, Frank being Irby, um, I won't go into detail, but what I think this illustrates is that there's been improvements in every single ward, in every single area, and um, hopefully people will recognise roads as, as we go through. Um, but things like parking restrictions on pavements, that's an issue for lots of people, raise that, um, as you would imagine. Um, coming through for Greensby, Frank being Irby, um, is a, a larger scheme around Hillview Road and addressing speeding. Um, because that's a big scheme, that will be subject to public consultation. Um, so that's in the design stage now. So um, uh, the majority of things that come through this programme have to go out to public consultation through a statutory process so people can raise objections or, or support the scheme. And, and that, would, that will be a case in point. Um, Hoy Lake and Mells, quite a lot of what's happened there has been around drop curb cross crossings, which I never say. Um, which actually really does improve um, journeys for people who might have mobility issues or push chairs, getting around and about um, our, our local areas. Um, and again, parking restrictions where people are, particularly where people are abusing um, junctions and parking at junctions and reducing sight lines, that's a real issue um, in terms of road safety. Um, so the schemes coming forward for Hoylake and Mells that we're discussing. Thanks, Helen. Um, are some rest parking restrictions at Mel Station. Um, also lots of issues there in terms of people parking um, um, and reducing access there. Um, there's been long standing issues with people going the wrong way along the promenade at North Parade, which we've been discussing as part of this programme. Um, and things like making sure that is a very minor one, but quite important, uh, quite important in that people can't get into um, Ashton Park on the access road because people park across it. So it's very simple things that actually if you're stuck and you can't get uh, where you need to get to are quite irritating. Um, Pensby, um, obviously the ward we're in tonight, um, lots of 20 mile per hour zone initiatives there that we've already funded um, and a major scheme at the bottom there over with Wirral South which went into Hesworth so that was, that was completed. Thanks Helen. And then coming forward now, more 20 mile, 20 mile per hour zones, Haywood Boulevard area, um, and a number of other um, traffic regulation orders to improve sight lines. So you can see the general theme of the types of things that we've been funding. Um, a couple of significant schemes, one of them being the zebra crossing at, in Woodchurch, so that was the, the single thing that, that the, the panel chose to fund. Um, Very expensive, one of the but that's at a, a, a local school making a significant difference. Um, and the other Upton issue there is around parking at Upton School, which is, causes um, real problems. Um, West Kirby and Thurston, some discussion and debates we've had over West Kirby and Thurston because of, in terms of issues. Um, the Avalon School one has been going on for a long time, as it counts for Elton, so we put some parking restrictions which has a knock on effect. So, Helen, if you go on to the next slide. Um, we're now looking at some um, additional measures which will um, kind of hopefully mitigate some of the unintended consequences of that because people are going faster because there's no park cars to slow them down. So it's such a complex um, um, area of road safety in terms of you can do one thing that can have a, a you know a negative effect. Um, and I say we'll cover another major issue that's that's been um, certainly in the last 12 months is parking around. Um, the football club in West Kirby, particularly on um, days when they've got events going on there, is causing real issues for local residents. So um, you can see that, I think that's probably the final slide, is it Helen? Um, so just, that was just to give a quick overview because I thought it was quite interesting to see the, 
you know, actually the volume of things that we've supported through the committee, the real variety, um, and you know, lots of individual schemes that hopefully made an impact. Um, there's still money to be spent by the end of March next year, so that we're, we need to meet soon to finalise some of that because there are some, you know, as I say, some complexities around some of those schemes that means they might not be taken forward. Um, but I thought hopefully that was a useful update for committee members. I'm happy to take any questions or hand them over immediately to Dave. Right, okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks very much for that, Jane. It is useful to remind ourselves <coughs> and, the, uh, and our guests about the work that's been done around that. And, and again, a couple of things I'd like to do. So, I'm going to ask Dave to say, to give some explanation, some context around it. Stuart is the cabinet member that allocates the resources if Stuart wants to say anything. But I'm also conscious because Matthew has let me know we've got a number of colleagues from uh, Upton Moor that have got some road safety related questions that they'd like to ask. So uh, should we should we do that? Then we'll bring David. So let's let the man we I think we've got plenty of time. Is there a football match on um, we've got bags of time I think. Um, so, the lady at the front would like to ask a question. Hi, my name is Jane Cutting, I'm from Heron Road. Hi, Jane. Um, nothing has been mentioned about Heron Road, but we have been complaining about high speeds of traffic coming straight through, ignoring what traffic restriction signs are there. And nothing seems to have been done about it. You've all been good at listening, but we've seen no action. And we have been complaining about it. For, is it two years now, Barry? Well, it's ongoing. It's been more like 38, 39 years. <laughs> and uh, really, it is a major concern of ours and many other people. It is also a road that takes school buses. And so we have got children crossing the roads regularly and we've got through traffic taking no notice at all of the existing speed restrictions. I would ask for a 20 mile an hour restriction, but seeing everybody's ignoring what we've got, I wondered whether you had any other methods. Okay. Um, can, we, can we group these together? Because I'd like David to comment on some of them in terms of context and, and so on. Um, so we'll try and group them together. Gentlemen, yes? Hi, my name is David Paddington. I just wondered about the traffic car and on the news it's reported that speed humps are causing environmental damage because of the braking and accelerating between the speed humps. We're looking for a council plan on staying with that system or are they looking at alternatives? And again, the traffic car. Okay, thank you for that. David's the, uh, the professional. We all have a view, but David is the professional. Yes, sir. Well, sure. I'm slightly confused because I sit on the travel. Uh, for the Council of Wessingham. And I know there's a, a guy there from West Kirby who keeps on asking can uh, they make a 20 mile zone uh, of West Kirby. And he's been asking that for nearly 12, maybe more than 12 months. And he's always told it doesn't work. And yet I've just seen their presentation saying how the 20 mile zones are working and, and, and how they're promoting those across the world. A bit confused about the two different stories. Uh, what first appears about the police. Okay. Uh, and happily, we've got the police here as well. I think, broadly speaking, uh, the public spirited ones of us, we'd like to think, would obey those signs. The sad fact tends to be is they tend to be followed when people enforce them. Um, but we'll, and David's going to pick that up, and we've got the police who I'm sure will want to comment on that. We've got someone from the police here, I think, have we? Uh, Yes, sir. Ken Roberts, okay. Heron Road. I really came here to talk about the larger issues with Heron Road, but as soon as I'm here with this problem at Heron Road, is basically the increase in volume of heavy goods vehicles, including 40 ton Arctic wagons, which on, a 19, well, on a, what is basically an 18 foot carriageway, there's all hell left loose when two of these try to pass. In fact, there was two stopped on the corners, on the dog leg, and I think it took them 20 minutes to get past each other, something like that. To the, much to the amusement of everybody else in the right cars beside them, of course. So that's just one additional thing. I, I'd like to speak about the larger issues with Heron Road later on. Yeah, okay. But while you're on road safety, yeah. this thing is caused. And of course, the, as 
Jane, my neighbour, has already mentioned, the speed at which people come down there. Both directions, when they leave the Hoylake Road branch, it's an acceleration situation right until they get to the, the point at which they have to stop for safety's sake, for their own safety's sake. And it's coming the other way, this a flash, the only control for speed is a flashing 30 sign, which nobody takes a damn bit of notice of anyhow, they just come still rolling straight through. I'm halfway down the Heron Road house. <coughs> it's, I have a reasonable chance of getting out. I can see what's coming, but there are people at the far end, the two ends, who can, because of the curve in the road, the people at the far end at the, uh, the Greasby end, have got to practically stand, have someone to stand out in the road and give them the nod when it's time to come out of their driveway. So Heron Road is crying out for some speed controls on that road and traffic controls <coughs> as well. We'll come back later. Good point, well made. Yes, gentlemen at the back, I think it was indicated. Yeah, I've got a question if you want one. We heard about the, the, the parking on these different roads. I'm just going to come at a different angle here because you go to Woodchurch, you see how narrow the roads are on Woodchurch. A lot of families now have got um, people living at home that have, that there's four cars to one family. Now, if you don't park half on and half off, if you were to park on the road like you're supposed to, how would emer emergency vehicles, how is any other vehicle going to pass <coughs> those cars that are on the road? And I, I fully agree that a lot of roads on the Whittle definitely need more uh, speed restrictions because I live in Greasby, I walk my dogs every morning and Arrow Road at 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, the speed that some of them come down there is horrendous and, you know, one, there is going to be an accident at some point. But I'd like to know more on that parking. If you don't park half on, half off, no emergency vehicles are going to get past. Um, yes, sir. Not wanting to bore people about Heron Road, <laughs> but the wider picture is, last year we had the road closed 11 times due to accidents. The police say, but nobody was killed. Um, as Mr. Rees will confirm, we asked for no entry signs at the Hoylake end by the roundabout. Unfortunately, we didn't get no entry signs. All we got was markings on the road to say no entry. We didn't get a proper red no entry sign. Unfortunately, we've had the road closed twice since we had the signs painted on the road. That's the broader picture. I think we, we just feel neglected in Mel's. We're just <coughs> not getting the support that we need. Okay, I mean, I, I'm not a Mel's councillor. Um, I'm not a Upton councillor. I'm not a GFI councillor. Uh, but what I do know from colleagues, and, and sometimes you know, people say, oh, you know, I didn't get immediately with what, what I wanted, but I wanted it all a big campaign. We can make the case, and for a number of reasons, we're not always able to get exactly what we want all the time. And the, one of the key professionals in this, who again has to balance resources against, this is just Wirral West, of course, there's other constituencies too, probably, if we have this discussion, make it exactly the same point. So, David, you've picked up a lot of those questions. Do you want to try and um, give us some answers? There is a try roving microphone there. Provide some reasonable answers to people. Um, we started off with Helen Road, so I shall uh, try and make my responses there. Sorry, I think it might be a parking issue. <laughs> That's if, it's off the, if it's off the road, that's fine. Okay. I'm Dan Dries, and I'm the road safety manager at Rural Council. I've been working with Rural um, for a very long time, almost 30 years now. Um, I've seen a lot of changes in both traffic volumes on the roads, but also I've seen, I'm very pleased to say, that there is a general reduction in the number of collisions where people are hurt on those roads. And uh, since the year 2000, we've got around about 65% fewer crashes where people are hurt on those roads than uh, last year than we did in the year 2000. 
which is an excellent, but I guess I'm, um, that's partly because we've been tough in uh, allocating resources to those places which have got proven road safety records. And that's part of the statutory duty that the council has, to look at places, and look at the casualty records, and on the basis of those casualty records, recommend programmes of action. Um, there is still a lot more to do. Um, we've not finished it yet. There are still people being hurt on our roads and the job's not done until that's, um, we've got a, a transport network without anybody being hurt. But Heron Road, um, it's a twisty road. It's fairly narrow. It's got a 40 mile an hour speed limit on the rural section and a 30 mile an hour speed limit uh, in the section with the houses which are on one side. Um, there are six um, collisions recorded by the police involving people being injured and I know from years of experience there are far more collisions that occur, bumpers being bent and all those disruptions that you've had, including the road being closed while they sort it out. And that happens not just on Heron Road, but it also happens on other roads as well. But I take the point um, that there are more collisions there than we're getting details of. Drivers have a, a responsibility to report uh, to the police those collisions which involve injury. And that's the detail that we get. And from that detail, we get a range of information. We're able to see, um, we're able to prioritise the kinds of measures that have a positive effect on stopping those those collisions happening. Um, I accept that particularly near the ends of the, the, the junction on uh, uh, Bernard Road and also towards where the, the rural section is, it may be more difficult than in the middle to pull out of your driveway. Sadly, uh, I'm not allowed to nick people for speeding. I'd love to be able to fill lots of ticket books in with, um, with speeding tickets to help my uh, police colleagues, but I'm not able to do that. And I think it's important that uh, all of you know, police are hard-pressed partners, that they are asked to do their fair share of um, speed management on, on Heron Road. Um, we can't do that. It doesn't meet the criteria that the government sets out for speed cameras. I don't know what that is in there. Um, so this is going to be about police enforcement. Um, you mentioned it's like a 20 mile an hour, um, but you also wisely say, well, you don't think that if they're not doing 30 or 40 at the moment, they're probably not going to do the 20. And you're quite right. To the extent that in setting 20 mile an hour speed limits, the guidance set out by the Department of Transport, which we have to, um, to review, is uh, set out that we shouldn't be putting 20 mile an hour on roads where the mean speeds are 24 mile an hour and above. It's about self compliance, <coughs> the respect of drivers driving on the roads, putting the sign up at the beginning of the road and an occasional repeater about 180 metres apart doesn't make drivers drive slower. It's about changing the environment and that costs a lot more money. So Heron Road, as I understand it, the council itself is still welcoming the idea of all the progressing discussions about having the golf resort. And that is dependent on some forward planning applications and having the money to do that and the planning applications being approved. If that goes ahead, then we are in a better position to um, apply for grants from government for a significant realignment of Heron Road, which is about the only thing that I can see from the data that we've got around resolving those accidents. But it's not cheap to do that. It's going to cost millions of pounds. And rural doesn't have that in its budget for um, casualty reduction or uh, it, it's where it's program word improvement. Okay, okay. I, so now you're probably going to move on to some of the other questions. Thinking about this, I thought it was probably good. I should give a little summary. Then we invite all the councillors to put their view. Always, and I'm sure we will, 
um, respecting the professionalism of officers who are, you know, in Dave's case, the road safety professional and knows more about this sort of thing, accident reduction, than anyone else in the room I'm prepared to get. So, always hopefully respecting Dave's professionalism. But, John, I think you wanted to, to make a point about uh, Heron Road. Yes, I'm a councillor for Holiday Court, Holiday Court. And this has been a problem for years now. And the idea of realigning that road, to my, my mind, would be very, very costly. And I don't think it would be the answer really either. Now, at the time um, that uh, I first became a councillor, the road was nowhere near as busy as it is now. And the reason for that is that the uh, motorways have been extended in effect uh, right from uh, uh, the uh, Upton section right through. And people now find it much easier to come off there and come along there and come down Heron Road than what they had to do in the past. Uh, and it, it's very, very busy. Uh, any, anybody who uses that word will say so. And at most times of the day, I might say, as well. I've attended meetings with residents, and, you know, it's been the unanimous view for a long, long time that if you can't deal with the road as it is, it needs a new road. And I would like to see, and I understood that the scheme that would be associated with the golf, uh, proposed golf club, if it ever comes off, um, would uh, give us an opportunity to incorporate a scheme within the bids for money. Um, in actual fact, there was a scheme uh, uh, formulated many, many years ago, but uh, with the cutbacks in um, you know, grants and whatever, uh, that never came to anything. It should come to something. I have, even now, um, a, a, a grandson who travels uh, that route to school and back, and some of the hair-raising things he tells me are, are terrific. Uh, terrifically bad, I might say. And all, all I would want to say, Chairman, is I would like to see, we still have a capital programme, I'm sure we do. And what would you do if you don't have the golf club? Do you say, right, that's it, there's no way we can do the road. That road is dangerous on its own without any talk about the golf course. It's needed now, and it's needed more than ever. I know how many accidents, because I'm told about them. They're not all reported. Some of them are minor ones. Some of them have been far more dangerous. And the old lady who used to have to step out from the, uh, where the, the 30 mile an hour is, at, uh, at the beginning of the freeway, as I call it, going through to, um, to, to the other end, uh, she used to take her life in her hands to go out to, to stand there while her son got the car out. I think, you know, what sort of age are we living in when we're leaving people in that sort of danger? It's high time that was done under a capital scheme. Whether or not we get it, of course, and it should be done now, and as soon as it's done, the better for the safety, not of, of just adults driving cars, some of them driving too fast, and that's their own fault, but nevertheless, you don't see them killed. But, uh, I hope not, anyway. Uh, but, it's the children going on buses to, it's the school and that. And I've seen the speed at which some of those buses pass too. And they go round blind corners like that. One day, there will be the most enormous accident. And the residents and the councillors who are representing that ward will be attending the inquest to give evidence. I've no doubt about that. Um, thank, thank you, John. Um, Matthew, you, in the case, you're going to say something. Do you want well, did you want to wait yeah. to your, um, for David to do up to the door? Did you want to do I know, but I haven't raised my list. Okay. Um, so, just, just two quick things. One, one gentleman to the audience, I appreciate what Councillor Hale just said, um, but I'm also very aware of the, the um, fact that because of, and I'm not making party political points here, but because of the government settlement for the Wirral, there are enormous savings that once again need to be made, as, as have been since 2010, and are going to continue until 2020, so I would love for us to be able to just tap into cash. But I wanted to take advantage of, of my sort of inexpertise. You said Dave is the expert here. Maybe it's quite a simplistic question. Why can't we just have speed cameras along the road? Uh, 
it doesn't meet the criteria for putting speed cameras in, which is based around the number of death and serious injuries. And how, how can I just ask you, how strict is this criteria? Why do we have? To, we can't do it without that criteria met. Um, we we uh, across Merseyside, because we're part of the Merseyside Road Safety Partnership, yeah. Merseyside is prioritisation of those those resources. Um, we we can't put another camera in there. It doesn't meet the criteria. If and, and I don't know what the cost is. Is your approximate? Around about fifty something thousand pounds. So fifty grand or two million to sort the whole road out. Could we not just decide to fund it ourselves? Like other have to go to fifty grand. It's about putting the cameras in, not as a cash cow, having the appropriate sight lines, there's a whole raft of stuff there, but um, it's not a suitable way for putting that in. I just, okay. I, okay, just final point on that then, I will stop. I, I find that generally, and I, I appreciate David, your, the constraints, as, you, as I bet you share this, I find it enormously frustrating that it seems like there's probably a room of people here, including yourself, I would imagine, who are all like, do you know what, 50 grand, get a speed camera up and start like slowing people down, and because of other reasons we find constraints, I would love it if we could go away from this and try and work out how we either circumvent those objects or, or, or hurdle them. But I just I find it really irritating when there's, oh, but that's why we can't do it. I want to find out how we can do it. And I'd love, I'd love you if you can go away and try and do that, I'd be very grateful. And um, there's uh, lots of, lots of support for that proactive and pragmatic approach. And, and sitting next to you will be the cabinet member for Highways, who's a member of the Road Safety Partnership, the Merseyside, we are members of the Merseyside Road Safety Partnership. And I'm sure that that message can go home to that partnership. But also, Stuart can give some thought to whether we, um, ha whether we can apply for some uh, specific uh, flexibility, as Matthew suggested. Phil, you indicated that you wanted to say yes, yeah, so or you might as well. It's on. Okay, fantastic. Always on. Oh, very clever to be going to be going <laughs> back. Um, <clears throat> this is not home road, so forgive me. Uh, it was brought about removing speed bumps uh, in order to um, improve air quality along uh, certain roads. We're fortunate in the world, be it a trick of geography or something else, that we don't actually have any um, clear air zones within the world. Our air quality is consistent within the levels which is, which is acceptable. That's unlike many of our neighbours, for example, Liverpool, Nosley and St. Helens all have clear air zones. That reason they've received funding to try and correct that problem. We don't have any, so we haven't got that funding. That doesn't mean we're complacent, we need to keep driving air quality and a number of schemes will come on stream to try and do that. But it's interesting to me that we're, we're discussing quite heavily the problems on Heron Road, but at the same point a report came out which has suggested that we remove um, traffic calming measures and speed bumps along certain other roads. I think that's perhaps a too simplistic, can I speak now to the person who asked the question, for me to see it was. I think that's perhaps a too simplistic a solution, especially in an area where the need, whilst it is there, is not as dire as elsewhere. I know that there's quite a lot of problems around speeding on certain roads, as with primary school springs to mind, and frankly, if they would have speed bumps there, I'm sure the the mothers and the fathers of the children who go there and the people in the school would take the council's hand off to have them there. The idea of removing them, to my mind, is an absolute non starter. And uh, I'm going to bring Michael and the gentleman that's been trying to indicate. I think Thank we're going to have the gentleman there first. Good evening, okay. John Scott from Mel. I'm not a safety officer, I'm not a policeman. I'm an ex HG lorry driver with 30 years experience in Europe and Britain. I know the car council to be strapped, cash, cash strapped. I know these are very difficult times. Why do we allow HGV lorries and buses to use a, a road that is blatantly not suitable for their passage? Yeah. Why do we not make the lorry driver's life simpler and put up signboards to direct them on a safer, more cost efficient in terms of diesel, time, wear and tear on a vehicle, heart attacks. Why do you not put signs up at both ends saying that buses and HGVs may not pass? Send them another way. Everybody will be happier. The cars will pass more easily and without causing too much trouble. I would suggest fire engines are also HGVs. 
you've got on Helen Road. I'm the ward councillor here in Pensby. One, one, of them, one of them certainly. The, <laughs> so, one of the ward councillors. We've got Pensby Road there, which, got, which has got identical problems. I've been working with, with Dave Reese for the last five and a half, six years on road safety. And may I say, there's nobody works harder or takes this issue more seriously than our road safety manager, and we're, we're very lucky to have him. Now the gentleman who, who before said keep lorries off roads no, adjacent. No, I'm sorry, uh, I, I must, I must. Off must certain roads. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you. That's not a fair. Certain roads. All right. It does that we've to got, me all the time. If, 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 if you let me finish, we've got a road here parallel to Pendlebury Road, which is called Barnston Road, and it's very dangerous where the fox and the hounds are for people who know it. There's a bend there, so lorries have been kept off that road. And guess where they're all going, these lorries? They're going onto Pensby Road. So if you keep lorries off one road, you've got to put them onto another road. So the people who live in this area here, Pensby Road's actually a demarcation line in, in this world because there are people who live on this side of the road who find it too dangerous to actually cross. So it's, it's a met, what I'm trying to do is put this debate, if you like, into some sort of perspective. We've got roads that we perceive, and we do, and they are dangerous. But the, the, the number of vehicles that are on our roads now compared to 30 years ago, well, there's just no comparison. The roads weren't built to take this amount of traffic. And everyone here tonight, I would think, has come in a car. We're all guilty, or most of us are guilty. There's very few people who don't drive these days. Um, so just putting it in... in you, you have one, one action and then you have a reaction, you have one consequence and you have a counter consequence. And it isn't simple and there is lack of funds. But speeding is a police issue and the police have got their own issues with lack of numbers. Um, so just trying to put the debate into some sort of, of context. But well, Pensby Road is a very, very dangerous road. And I've been working for, for nearly six years now, as I said before. So, thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, me. Mike. Thank, thank you for the context. Yeah. There is... I just no, 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 no. There are other people that are trying to indicate. I know. Sorry. But so, so... There's been something said there which is contestable. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the lady behind you. Sorry, the lady behind you. Can you hand me? Yeah. I would just like to take issue with the mention of the Hoylake Golf Resort and the fact that... Golf Resort goes ahead, it could be an answer to Heron Road problems. Hoylake Golf Resort is going to include the Hoylake Bypass. Um, a recent study by the Campaign for Rural England um, proved without doubt that roads like the Bypass do nothing but increase traffic mm -hmm. in the general area, increase traffic in the roads, road network around, and bring more and more chaos to the area. So how you can say that a new bypass even if it's going to provide funding to amend Hoylake uh, Heron Road, it's going to be the answer. It just doesn't seem right to me. That Hoylake bypass is going to be another direct link 
to the motorway through Sokol Massey. All you're going to do is make traffic in the area much, much worse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm conscious we've got quite a few questions around uh, golf resorts, etc. So uh, thanks for linking it to road safety today. Uh, th there was another, I'm conscious we had 15 minutes set aside for this, and it's been, been really interesting, so I don't want to cur curtail it, but if we could zip it along a bit, Dave, that would be great. Um, I was just going to comment about uh, heavy goods vehicles. It's so one thing to put a sign up, it's not always us that ends up enforcing that sign, and we need to allow uh, accept for access on, on Helen Road. Um, the accept for access is to our servicing vehicles and other vehicles as well. The side police are um, pressed for their resources. Um, I'm not convinced, and our traffic network manager uh, uh, is also not convinced that putting in a um, heavy goods ban is the appropriate measure. Um, okay. I can, I can understand your point of view, because that's my concern. They don't disappear, they just go somewhere else. Yeah. Um, but I think it would seem to me, I'm just making this as a suggestion, I so we've got the solution, but it seems to me that there should be a series of options looked at. And, that then, and those options would be <coughs> excuse me, impact assessed. So then we could work out uh, what is going to be the best solution. I, I say this as someone myself who was, you see a particular issue in your board, you say, like, let's sort that out. What you don't see is then the consequential impacts where it, where it might, the issues might fan out to. So it, what looks like a straightforward answer very often it isn't as straightforward as that, it's more complex. So, just to move the, um, the Heron Road thing on a bit, and Stuart's here now, I'm sure you won't mind, <coughs> but if we could do some sort of options appraisal about what can be done with Heron Road, what the issues are, I know it gets a score on impact and road safety and people killed and seriously injured, but we could then look at a series of options and we could have a look at the evidence and assumptions and all that sort of stuff to see see what the the best solution is in terms of that. And then at least we could have a proper discussion and then we could pick up the points about funding. Is it simply a matter of funding or is there other other issues? Where does Herald Road sit in the overall priority across the world? Does, is that is that a kind of reasonable -ish thing to do, do we think? Yeah I think I think it's important to yeah. you know look at the context yeah. you know, because of you know, the rest of the world because you know, no, if, if, if it was down to me, and had a limitless amount of, well, if it was down to me, I'd, 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 I'd you know, by an accident, there'd be no accidents, there'd be no road safety issues, no one would get injured on our roads. But, but sadly, even if we had a you know, limitless supply of money, I don't think that's ever going to happen, sadly. Um, but the, the fact is, you know, we have got limited amounts of money. The, the money comes up from central governments into the local city region, and, and it's you know, distributed. Um, across the the the, the five council areas, and that I, 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 if I remember right, it was about one point six million last time, was it? Okay. Yeah. So so that small amount of money has got to cover the whole world, and so, so obviously there's a there's a priority list. So you know if there's a location where you know, people have been seriously injured or killed, obviously that's going to take a, a higher priority. There's the other locations. I can I can say for sure you no. Know, you, you guys, that you know, Heron Road has is is been looked at, and uh, you know, any accidents on there are investigated. And you know, if, there's, if there's anything that can be done, you know, that, that will be done. But you've got to realise that, that, that one North Million pounds you know, we had last year, that, that was